We talked about the cnidarians and the reason why they call, are called cnidarians, remember that they have stinging cells. These organisms also are carnivorous and they also have a digestive system, but they have an incomplete digestive system. So one of the differences between these cnidarians and the sponges is that we now have intra, excuse me, extracellular digestion. So we actually have the ability to digest food outside of the cell. And you'll remember that sponges had only intracellular, so they didn't have any kind of digestive system. So these cnidarians can be either medusa and polyps, and that's some kind of, that's in general, one of the ways that they are classified is based upon that. So we have different classes of the cnidarians. And so I'm going to list them here and you need to know these terms. Um, anthozoa, or the anthozoans. Zoa means animal. Antho is actually a term that is commonly applied to plants. And so when we talk about the anthozoans, these can sometimes be confused with plants. So the um, anthozoans include, for example, sea anemones and coral. What do these have in common? These are generally polyp, right? So both are polyp forms. They tend to be more sessile than mobile. We can also talk about the cyphozoans. These include jellyfish, like the true jellyfish, one group of jellyfish. And what do these all have in common? They have the medusa body form. There's another group called the cubozoans. and I think that's how you, you spell it, but these are the, um, the jellyfish that are more cube-shaped, weirdly, and the reason why they are in a different group is, is that they actually have complex eyes that can see images, weird, and they have very powerful venom or poison. Actually, it would be venom because they're injecting it, very powerful venom, right, in their cnidocytes. So those are the cubozoans. You should look them up. There's some really cool images of cubozoans. And then the last group that you need to know are the hydrozoans. Those hydrozoans are kind of the most diverse in lab, we sometimes, or you might have experienced, looking at a hydra. So a hydra is a freshwater form of a cnidarian. So weirdly, not all cnidarians are marine. When we think about them, the vast majority of them are marine. And hydra have that polyp shape to them. And then there can be like a colony of polyps um, that is sometimes referred to as obelia. So this is a colony of polyps. And these are kind of cool because they have um, specialized polyps that are involved in feeding and then some polyps that actually are involved in reproduction and they actually bud off medusa. So there's kind of this strange, cool um, alternation of generations where we have um, some of them are polyp, at some point in time they're in their life cycle, they're polyp, and then they turn to medusa. When we look at the most strange example of probably a cnidarian, this would be the Portuguese man of war. And so the Portuguese man of war looks kind of maybe sort of like a jellyfish. It has a bell. It has a um, structure that allows it to, it's like a float. So it has a, actually called a float. And this actually um, sometimes acts as a sail so that the air currents on the surface of the ocean actually push this along. And then this is also a colony of polyps. So even though it kind of maybe sort of looks like a jellyfish because it has these long tentacles, 
the tentacles are actually a colony of polyps. And some of those polyps specialize in feeding. Some of those polyps specialize in reproducing. And so it's a very interesting interesting organism because of it's that it's a it's a colony of all these things that work together and not in a form of a medusa so those are the um, major uh, four major classes of the cnidarians that you need to know